Hello everyone, it's Nishant from Career Ride here and in today's video, I'm gonna talk about new topic and the topic is basic core Java interview questions and answers for freshers. So without wasting time, let's come to the concrete stuff now. Alright, so let's begin with the first one. What is Java? Java is high-level general-purpose programming language created in 1995 by James Gosling and is now owned by Oracle. Java is one of the most popular language in the world and is secured, fast and powerful. It supports multi-paradigms such as object-oriented, functional, imperative, etc. and has a huge community support behind it. It is used to develop mobile applications, desktop applications, web applications, web servers, games, database connection and many more and runs on more than 3 billion devices around the world. Now coming to the next one, how is Java program executed? A Java program is written and saved in a .java file known as a source code. This source code is then passed to the compiler where it compiles into bytecode. Now this bytecode cannot be directly executed by the machine. The bytecode is translated into machine code first by the Java virtual machine that is JBM and then executed by the machine. Now what is this JBM? JBM is platform specific which means every platform has its own Java virtual machine. Okay, so moving on to the next one. How is Java platform independent? The Java programming language is platform independent which means the code can be written once and run anywhere. And this is achieved because of Java compiler that converts source code into bytecode. And this bytecode is platform independent and can be executed on any platform through Java virtual machine. For example, if a program is written and compiled on a Windows platform, the program's bytecode is first be translated into machine code and then can be executed on any platform such as Windows, Linux, Mac OS through their Java virtual machine. Now coming to the next one, what are the various access specifiers in Java? Access specifiers define the scope or accessibility of the classes, interfaces, variables, etc. It defines how they can be accessed from other parts of the program. And there are four access specifiers in Java. They are public, private, protected, and default. Now coming to public. Now when defined as public, the data items and functions are accessible from anywhere in the program. Next is private. When defined as private, they are only accessible from the class where they are defined. Now next is protected. When defined as protected, they are accessible from the classes that belong to the same package, the subclass of the class and from within the class where they are defined. Now next is default. And if you do not mention any specifier, then by default the default access specifier is active which means they are accessible from all the classes that belong to the same package. Okay, so coming to the next one, what is a method in Java? A method is a block of code that performs a specific task. Methods are also called functions. Methods can also take input of the data in the form of parameters. Methods must be declared within a class and they are defined by the name of the method followed by a parenthesis. There are methods which are already predefined such as system.out.println and we can also define our own methods. Now here is an example of our own method. Now in this example you can see forward slashes which are comments which are ignored by the compiler but it is very useful for the user for better readability of the code. Okay, so let's try to understand what is Java main method. In a Java program, the main method is a method where the execution starts or it is the entry point of a Java program. 
Hence, it is one of the most important methods of Java. The Java compiler or Java virtual machine looks for the main method when it starts executing a Java program. Now, let's have an example of main method in a Java program. Okay, so the next one is what is string arguments that always appear on the Java main method. String array is used to declare a simple string array and argument is the name of the string array. Argument stores command line arguments that are supplied when executing a Java program as an array of string objects. And if we run our program from the command line and supply arguments such as then argument will contain string 1 and 2. Hence, it is necessary parameter for the main function. And these parameters are absolutely necessary in main method in order for it to be treated as entry point of the Java program. Alright, so moving on to the next one. What is a static method? A method which is declared as static can be accessed directly by specifying its name. It can be called without creating an object of class. Whereas, a method declared as public without static can be accessed only by the creation of the, an object of the class. Static method belongs to the class and not to the object. A static method doesn't require any object state. So when you do not want to access instance variable, you can call static methods without instantiating the object. Now let's have an example of static method. So in this example, we have a class called test. And the test class, we have two methods. One is static method, and other is normal method. Now come to the main method. In the main method, you can see we have called static method without creating object of the class test. But in order to call a normal method, we have created an object of class test and then called a normal method. Alright, so moving on to the next one. What is method overloading? In method overloading, multiple methods can have same name with different parameters. Method overloading can be achieved in two ways. By changing the number of arguments and by changing the data type of arguments. Now let's have an example over here. So in this example, you can see we have two methods with same name, but different type of arguments. Now the next question is, can we overload the main method? Yes, we can overload the main method. We can have any number of main method. Now the question arises, how does the compiler know which is the entry point into the program if there are multiple main methods? The compiler will check for the parameters string argument in the main method and will recognize it as the entry point into the program. JVM always calls the original main method. It doesn't call the overloaded main method. Alright, so coming to the next one. What is a constructor in Java? A constructor in Java is a special method that is used to initialize an object. A constructor must have the same name as that of the class and doesn't have a return type. And every time an object is created using the new keyword, the default constructor is called. Now let's have an example of a constructor. So in this example, you can see the moment we create an object, it will automatically call the constructor. Now coming to the next one, how many types of constructors are used in Java? Now based on arguments accepted by the constructor, there are three types of constructors. And the first one is no argument constructor. A no argument constructor is a constructor that doesn't have any arguments or parameters. The values are defined within the constructor itself. Next is parameterized constructor. 
A parameterized constructor is a constructor that contains arguments or parameters. Next one is default constructor. A default constructor is a constructor that is created by the compiler when we do not define any constructor in a program. A default constructor must not be confused with a no argument constructor. They are not the same in Java. Okay, so the next question is explain the difference between Java constructor and Java method. A Java constructor is a special method used to initialize an object. Whereas a method is a block of code that performs a certain task. A constructor must not have a return type, whereas a method can have a return type. The constructor name must be same as that of class, whereas the method name may or may not be same as that of class. The constructor is invoked implicitly, whereas a method is invoked explicitly. Now coming to the next one, what is inheritance in Java? Inheritance is a process where a class acquires attributes and methods of another class. When we inherit the attributes and methods of an existing class, we can access all the attributes and methods of that class in the program. And this promotes code reusability. Now the next question is, what is subclass and superclass? Subclass is a class that inherits from another class and is also known as a child. It is derived from superclass and also inherits the properties of superclass. Whereas superclass is a class that is being inherited from and it is also known as a parent. It is a class from which many subclasses can be created. The subclasses also inherit the properties of a superclass. Now let's have an example of these classes. And in this example, bus, car, truck are all subclasses of the superclass vehicle. Now the next question is, how is inheritance implemented in a Java program? In Java to inherit from a class, we use the extend keyword. Now let's have an example of inheritance. Now in this example, the class main can use all attributes and methods of the arithmetic class as if they were their own. Okay, so coming to the next one, what is a final variable? A variable declared with the final keyword is a final variable and is used to prevent from overriding and modifying. So we can say a final variable once assigned a value can never be changed. So if we initialize a variable with the final keyword, then we cannot modify its value. And if we declare a method as final, then it cannot be overridden by any subclasses. Now the next one is, what is a package in Java? A package in Java is used to group related classes or it is a collection of related classes. Packages are used to avoid name conflicts between classes and it allows to write a better maintainable code. The next one is, what are the different types of packages? Packages are divided into two categories built-in packages and user-defined packages. Now built-in packages are pre-written and are stored in the Java API that are free to use. They consist of packages for managing input-output data programming and many more. And here are some of the commonly used built-in packages. Next is user defined packages and these packages are created by the user. Now coming to the last question in this series, what are abstract class? An abstract class is a restricted class where we cannot create objects of the class. To access the members of the abstract class, it must be inherited to a subclass 
where we can then access the members of the abstract class through the object of the subclass. An abstract class can have both regular methods and abstract methods without its body.